FSC Fest Jack Speed and Custom Shop. Today we're going to reassemble the driver's side door on this 1974 Ford F100. For those that may not know, this body style goes from 1973 through 79, so it doesn't have to be specifically a 74 for this video to pertain to your truck. There were some commercial grade trucks after 79 that had the same cab but had a different front clip and obviously a different back and so on, but the cab was identical along with the doors. So if you have that dent side shaped truck, which was named that because of the indent that's in here if this molding wasn't there, this video will still be for you. When I say putting this door back together, I mean the big window, the wing window, and all the rubber and all the weather stripping. The only thing that we didn't take out of the door were the door handles and the door latches. The only thing we're not gonna do in this video is reinstall the inner door panel because the old ones are pretty ratty. What we did do is we cut them up a little bit because we put new speakers in his truck and we relocated them. I cut the holes in the original inner door panel to use as a template for the new ones. I haven't ordered the new ones yet, so when, when it gets here, we're just gonna stick them on. I doubt I'll film it. Do yourself a favor, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, grab that notification bell, that way you'll get updates on what I do beyond this video. Also check out videos in the past, I've got a lot regarding this here truck. There is an error I believe I made came in my part. All the parts were ordered from LMC Truck. And when I ordered them, I tried to order everything as a kit. However, like I said, this body style goes from 73 through 79, but early in that generation of truck, they did not have outer door seals. I own a 79 F100, and that truck had outer door seals. We are adding outer door seals to this truck, but I only ordered one. It doesn't come available as a kit. Apparently, it only comes in left or right, and I ordered one. Either I either ordered one or one showed up. I gotta look in it at. So we're not gonna see me install the outer door seal. I can show you the one I put on the passenger side as I already completely finished the passenger side door. So without any more yapping from me, let's go ahead and get in this. I already took the door apart. As you can see, the only thing left is the door handle and latch setup. This is the relocated speaker that I mentioned from previous videos. But as you see, the wing window is completely removed. The separation was about here. And I've already taken all the rubber out of the door tracks. The door is completely empty. The regulator is out. Everything's out. Now, if you're like me and you like these old trucks, you're going to find out that this original window track is very brittle. This one actually came out pretty easy on both sides. It's the stuff in the door that's really difficult. Surprisingly, this one isn't cracking. The stuff in the door, I literally had to hammer out. But this, garbage. We'll replace that here in a minute. The trick to these is you take this hinge off right here. This right here is your hinge. So you gotta remove that right here. These two bolts is how you do that. After you take the two bolts off on the hinge, you take this nut off the bottom along with the spring and the washers. This is a is a half inch bolt. Now watch the way this cam comes out here. There's a cam in there that moves when you open and close the window. You have to replace the cam in the order. So watch the washers. We'll go ahead and take it off and I'll show you how the washers go in and out. the nut off, spring, there's a metal washer, and then a nylon washer. That comes off. On the inside there's the cam, but between the cam and the bracket is another one of these nylon washers. Open the window like so. I 
and then slide it apart like this. There's your cam and your washer. I call it a cam because it's not just this flat washer. This side is bigger than this side. That stops the window from overextending when you open it. There's now nothing left to do with the window until we go reinstall it. But we're going to replace this rubber piece right here. What you do is on the top right here, you take these two bolts out. There you have your old one. Take that and pitch it on the floor. Eventually it'll wind up in the garbage. Now is the tricky part. As you can see, there's already a hole. I don't like to see that. There's already a hole where the window shaft goes through, right where that cam used to be. The trick is putting this in this track. Now it does form fit and it forms fit well. Once you figure out how to get it in, it works fine. It is a pain in the neck. I'm not going to say it's easy. You do have to work it a little bit. I did one already. Let's see if I can make the other one at least look easy. Because the first one, well, it was a little bit tedious. Not impossible. Slightly tedious. The trick is this, these parts here go on the inside and the rest flap over the outside. And you got to press them in so they'll stick together. This one, this particular window component will require no glue, just its form fitting self. The trick to this flat side here is the rubber has to fall in that indent and then push in on this outer piece. It's not the easiest thing to explain or even to show on camera. It needs to fall in the notch here where this right here where my thumb is has a lip it goes inside a notch it's on the inside of here there's a mating surface on the other side where it does the exact same it takes a while to massage all the pieces in but what you effectively do to make sure it's in you peel this back and you look to see if the piece of rubber that's in the middle fits into that notch or not see right here it's kind of raised up so you just push it in a little with your screwdriver and pop it back in place. And just massage it, work it in. After a while, it'll form fit right in. It does take a while. This did take me about 10 minutes, but there we are. Now to put the window back in. Put your window through the hole, put your cam through the hole. Take the cam, put it on the shaft first. Cam goes in, then the washer. windows into the hole like so and you got to roll the hinge around I'll spin it around so you guys can see
There we go. I see that hole lined up. The first one started. It's closed and locked, but now you got to put your nylon washer, your metal washer, your spring, I'll put it that way, and then your nut. Take your half inch wrench and tighten your nut down. Now, in addition to getting a new weather stripping in the front glass, you have to replace the felt that goes in this track, or else you're going to have, like on my 75, that window just rattled back and forth, and believe me, it's noisy as all hell. So, on the bottom here, there's this little tab. That's what keeps that track from sliding down when you roll the window down. What you do is you fold it the felt fuzzy side in. That's what touches the window. You fold it over like so, push it into the track, and then shove it down to the very bottom. There. Just bend it over and fold it in. And work your way up to the top. Well, they do obviously give you extra material simply cut and trim now what we do is put the window in there are three holes one two and three on the back side of this actually on the front side of this window they go through holes that go here here and here and those are the screws that you obviously took out when you took this whole thing apart simply lay it in the track like so roll it over slides on in but you have to put it in this way because the spring is a there's a reinforcement right here where my thumb is and you have to get that spring over the reinforcement and then down and the reason we're doing this to get it in reason we're putting it in now is we have to know where we put the track to cut it up here it will have extra down in the door so we take our nice new track again rubber side one fuzzy on the other yeah fold it fuzzy in like so like a trough and start placing it up in the door Fold it and push it in. This will be this part here will be removed in a short while.
don't worry so much if it tries to fall out a little bit you can massage it back in it will go in without too much trouble also window likes to hold it in place granted the window isn't always in every part of the track every time so right here is probably where it's most important to get it in where she's solid now here you're never gonna get the window in now that's the problem so now what you have to do is pull this side down a little bit to be able to relax your wing window here so that just lays like that like so in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat and I'm going to wrap a little thing of tape just to keep gravity from yanking that piece off remember earlier we didn't bolt the wing window down we have to give it a little bit of room so we slide the window out like so just forward enough and we take our window place it in the door but against the track in the actual door not in the wing window and we move the wing window up Just takes a little bit of finesse. Bear in mind, you got to watch the speaker. It does tend to try to bang into the speaker case a little bit. It just takes a little bit of finesse. Once the window's in, then you can fish the window regulator in the hole. Now is the time you put these screws back in the door to hold the, to hold the window in its place. When you push this in, you'll feel it click in. You'll take the inside, the outside, and you fold it into the door. So not just in the track, but the outside lips right there. When it's done, it'll be all nice and pretty. You'll be able to tell once it's in that it's right. I mean, it. trust me, you'll see right when you see it. Next step is putting the window regulator in. That's this piece that works the crank. Obviously it's spring loaded to help you raise the window up. This nub, you gotta make sure that's on. If not, you gotta rivet a new one on. Now these weather stripping pieces go in the same way they came out. The part that rides on the window like this here, the fuzzy one, that goes on the inside. This one, the part that's rubbery on the outside, that goes to the outside. took it out so it looks like got these tabs yeah it looks like you got these tabs that hold them into place and they lock in, in them holes right there And would you imagine that they snap in easier than they snap out? Apparently because of the overlap, it would have been easier to put the inner one in first, followed by the outer one. It can be done. It can be done, you just got to work at it a little bit more. weather stripping is in next step is putting the window regulator in that's this piece that works the crank obviously it's spring loaded to help you raise the window up this nub you gotta make sure that's on if not you gotta rivet a new one on it's 
now I got the window regulator laying loosely. The window all the way up now. I've raised the window. I forgot to put the camera on. Raised the window up. The weather stripping holds it pretty firm. And you snap the door right the wind just snap the window regulator into the window track right down on the bottom of the window and turn the crank you'll find a spot where the holes line up if you didn't paint your door like we didn't paint the door you'll be able to mark up the original marks with your bolt holes, that'll help you line it up, make any adjustments it may need to be. There you go. Now you've got a window. To save these on some time, I already took the aluminum sill to hold the rug down to the cab of the truck. I took that off. I already applied some rubber cement. What this brand of rubber cement recommends you do is to let it get tacky and then start putting in your door seal. Now this door seal is a little longer than it needs to be and the seam starts about here, works its way all the way around and it ends here and then you gotta trim it. So what I've done is I put rubber cement from here all the way up and down to about the dashboard then I stopped I'm gonna let it dangle there then I'm gonna reapply more rubber cement and finish up here I'm wearing gloves because well it gets a little messy I know that's backlit, there's nothing I can do about it. And here we are on the pasture side. What I want to show you was that outer door seal. Obviously we replaced the inner door seal right here. But this outer door seal right here. This came later on in the this came on in this truck's body styles years. And all it did was help eliminate wind noise. It went from right under here, starting at about the hinge, just a little north of the hinge, up around the top. down the underneath it just keeps the wind from cutting up into this little groove right here so all you do to install it all you do to install it is you take some soapy water clean this off put your rubber cement put your put your seal down and hold it until it sticks gotta scrape a little bit of the excess cement off here you get the idea there's your outer door seal. That's how solid that door closes. It's so nice. Thank you for watching. Well, I hope this video was helpful to you in some manner, way, shape, or form. Now, admittedly, there are probably other ways to go ahead and put the window in the door. That's the way I did it. Again, I took the lazy way because I already installed the speakers. 
I didn't want to have to go take them back out again. It's a little bit of a pest. So I did it that way. I simply offer free advice with one simple request. Go ahead and join the FSC crew. Subscribe to the channel. Grab that notification bell. That way you'll get updates on any other future videos that I do. Whether it be on this 1974 Ford F100 or any other things I got going on around here between the 98 Mustang, 69 Chevelle, 68 Chevelle, all these other projects that I got going on. What you may not know is I am a full service custom car shop. That means if you can custom think it, we can custom build it. The idea is real simple. I take your vehicle, make it better, or I find one for you and build it specifically to your liking. Either way, the idea is why drive lame and boring? Why not drive something that's a lot cooler, something you can have fun with, and something you will never lose in the parking lot? By the way, we take payments. What that means is you pay as I work, you pay as we go. I don't do a bunch of the work and then have to chase you down for the money. You just make payments as I work. I work at your budget. This has been an ongoing project truck right here. And to be honest, this is my son's truck. So in this case, I'm working for free. He's buying the parts. You're not going to be so lucky. Sorry, guys. Got to make a living. Got to eat. Also, while you're checking me out, go ahead and go on FSCSpeedShop.com. I got a line of merch going on over there pertaining to my shop. I have Cream Machine shirts available. I also have Pinup Girl shirts available right now, and many more soon to come. With that being said, I am Steve Feschek. This is FSC, Feschek Speeding Custom Shop. What else can I build for you?